I guess my involvement probably goes back 33 years. I moved to Asheville uh, to work for a manufacturing plant out in Fletcher. Uh, was at that time it was called uh, Rockwell International. And one of the first things after being here for a month or so, I says, where do you get a haircut? And someone says, go down to the block. Several years ago, the city's Public Art and Cultural Commission identified the need for more diversity in the public art collection. And that diversity is not only diversity in the type of art that is represented and who it celebrates, but actually the diversity in the artists that have created this public art. So the idea for the project was born at that time. They also wanted to combine into that a desire to bring in artists from other communities to foster cross-collaboration between different folks. Well, in fact, somebody said the other day to the effect that we need to change the name of it. We're not, you know, as long as I'm, I have anything to do, we're not going to change the name. The block is the block because I remember someone telling me a story that in the 50s he wanted to take his family from Asheville to California. And one of the things he was always asked as he approached night and finding a place to uh, sleep for his family, he would ask, where's the block? Cities that he went through, where's the block? And he knew that if he could find what was called the block, he knew that there was probably a good chance he could find lodging, food, and those kinds of things. So that's why it's important to me to make sure we always maintain a piece of the history. What I think is important for that is the understanding that there are people of color, specifically African Americans, who played a vital role in the establishment of the city of Asheville and for the creation of that narrative. And for the longest time, the contributions and the lived experience of, experiences of those people has been omitted from the dominant narrative of the city of Asheville. I have a studio in the River Arts District, and when people come through, especially African Americans, they, they are surprised that we have a, a sizable African-American community here. They never see any African-Americans. They always want to know where are they, where are they. So I think it's important to establish our historical past, that we were here, and that we did contribute to this community. What's well, important to preserve our heritage in this area, Asheville has deep roots with um, it within the African-American community and uh, there's a lot of history there that as this community goes, it's grows, it's really important to preserve that culture and remind us the roots of this beautiful town. Celebrating African-Americans through public art preserves the culture of the city by creating a more integrated and inclusive community narrative. One of the things that we know, especially from our time here at The Block, is that there are so many stories and experiences and memories in the YMI Cultural Center alone. One of the main goals, probably the primary goal that has emerged as part of this process, not from the very beginning but now, is really just making what seems to be invisible but is not invisible and is really important visible. And that is the history of this area, but also present contributions of African American to our city today. Public art is, is, is important because we can see it, we can ride by it, we can decide whether or not we want to go in and see what it's all about. Public art is open to everyone. Visitors from other cities and states, as well as local people, can come and appreciate the art that's taking place and learn of the different historical things that have happened here in Asheville. Well, public art, when you uh, come into the city or you're walking around, you know that you're visible. You feel like you're respected. People know that you have a history. Art Ecology was chosen for this project because they had a lot of experience working with the public and engaged in the community. That is the primary reason that they were chosen. And Art Ecology, I was very impressed with them. They wanted to involve adults and students in the project. I liked their design because they were texture, color, and you got the feeling that it was Rep it represented the community, it wasn't stereotype. So the installation um, is inspired by one of the um, research um, projects that we were looking at, and one of it was from Dr. Wesley Grant, I believe, and he had presented this thing called Losses, and it was all of the businesses and homes and 
1,100 homes and the offices and the hospitals and the, and the local businesses, the barbershops, and whatever happened that was here that was basically decimated, that was the inspiration. And so when we started looking into that and, and realizing those are the heart of the community. They asked us to come here and meet the community, the members, and the, then we get to hear their stories their needs, what they were looking for, and that gives us a different idea what really we needed to tackle. Because we've designed already the, the whole installation, but we're going to then cover it with the materials that we gather from the community workshop. It allowed me to carve image, you know, they had to do with the longings, like some of the image is longing from those neighborhoods, those places they used to create a community. The idea is to take those images and translate it to the installation combined with the worship of Monique and Flavia. The importance of a collective or importance of speaking for, you know, in a community is so that we all have the different perspectives from the different backgrounds, the different uh, experiences. I would love to see at the completion of this project that there is a sense of ownership and pride uh, in the work, in the art that is, that is displayed. First of all, taking my grandchildren to see the exhibit. Um, I'm looking to see um, how it's going to beautify the space of downtown Asheville, especially in that area. When the artwork is complete and installed, I am most looking forward to the conversations and the groups of students that'll take field trips to look at the art and have conversations with their artists, teachers, or instructors. Um, I'm most looking forward to um, elders and students and other community leaders having a point of pride in our community and really seeing themselves, whether it's in images or certain shapes or symbols that represent um, culture and heritage and tradition of the African American community. I want to be able to look back and say, it's there. I want to be able to see people on that corner quit just looking over here. I want them to come over here. People may have a certain idea about Asheville when they first come here, but I think being able to know there's history here of the African American people that lived here. They, this was their community. They thrived in this specific location. And having that voice is so important. I grew up here uh, watching people and remember when the block was very uh, vibrant and we replicated in the art. And people all over can appreciate it. And it would bring back memories of things that I've experienced as a kid growing up in Asheville. Together, we acknowledge what was. The ancestors help us to overcome feelings of loss and pain. Yes, we remember. Grandma always said, we make a way out of no way. And what will be, we will celebrate it together. Hope springs forth rightly. Transfer, transforming the ordinary status quo to something extraordinary, because that's what we do. Hope swings forth rightly. Justice, joyful justice, just as the ancestors did. And I'm going to mention just a few. There are individuals and so many who had so much to do with this space and this place and so much. So I want to mention and call before you and in their acknowledgement, Cornelius Miller, Ronald Nesbitt, Jenny Edwards, Francis Smith, Eugene Jeter, Bubbles, Lewis Isaac, so many ancestors that are with us right here, right now to help us in the journey. Hope springs forth brightly. Yes, we move forward boldly, proudly, bam!